Thank you, Keith, and thank you, everyone. I'd like to just start out. Um, I'd like to focus on the transplantation aspects and the um, animal model of our um, initial uh, defeat HIV, so defeat HIV um, 1.0 uh, initially. So our main objective when we started this out was to study the HIV reservoir after transplantation and then establish uh, an HIV-resistant blood and immune system in patients, and again, then model this in the non-human primate um, model. So, as you know, if we do an autologous transplant with gene-modified cells, if we do this in patients, for example, we would take the uh, mobilized um, cells uh, or bone marrow, doing bo bone marrow harvest, and isolate the stem cells uh, or T cells, and then we can modify these stem cells or T cells either with lentiviral vectors to express anti HIV genes or simply uh, doing CCR5 disruption, for example. Uh, and then we can reinfuse these cells and we can study also conditioning regimens, how to best uh, in, in facilitate engraftment of genetically modified cells. And the reason I'm showing you this here is because we can do exactly the same really in non-human primates. So the exact the transplant pr uh, process and procedure can be modeled very nicely in, non -human, in the non-human primates. We use the same reagents for the most part and the same conditions for the uh, any, uh, in vitro studies. And then if you use stem cells, obviously we can make the entire blood cell uh, system resistant to HIV. So what have we done? So far, we focused on two mechanisms for, uh, uh, to inhibit HIV entry. The, as you can see up here, the CCR5 with, that we've disrupted uh, in, in collaboration with Sangamo, and then C46, a fusion inhibitor, uh, as you can see on the right on the slide there. Uh, our initial studies focused on the, the use of that C46 fusion inhibitor, so to in, inhibit the fusion of HIV uh, to the cell membrane and then also the infection of cells. And this was delivered via a lentival vector and again tested in non-human primates initially. So what I show you here is animals that we transplanted after high-dose radiation. Uh, we see the 34 cells modified with a lentival vector to express this fusion inhibitor C46 uh, and then these animals recovered and were expressing C46, and then we had control animals uh, and C46 expressing animals. You can see here with two different vectors, the C46 uh, vector and then the control vector down there. And as you can see, only the uh, animals that had C46 expression in their CD34-derived T cells were actually able to recover the T cells back to normal levels. Uh, the other animals developed AIDS, as you can see, did not recover their T cells. So this was clearly uh, our first uh, experiment where to show uh, that C46 can protect CD34 cells, CD34-derived CD4 cells. We saw very nice positive selection in the gut and lymph node here in the black bars, as you can see when we analyzed that uh, day 21 and six months, so very nice uh, protection and selection of genetically modified HIV-protected cells in the GI tract and lymph nodes. And most importantly, what we've learned here is uh, only the C46-expressing animals actually maintain shift-specific CD4 and CD8 uh, T cells, and the majority of those were genetically modified and, again, HIV or shift-protected. So that was clearly critical. That's where we learned the protection of CD4 cells is, is, is critical to maintaining this, this uh, immune response against shift or HIV. Now, in two animals, we followed longer term, as you can see here. And in those animals, we also saw a steady decline of the viral load. Uh, one is down to just around the detection uh, threshold, as you can see there. And again, we think this is really uh, because these animals were able to maintain virus-specific T cells. Okay, as uh, Keith mentioned, we've used then for the CCR5 studies an R5 tropic virus. Here we went back to the uh, SIV MAC 239 backbone with an envelope from the uh, uh, HIV clade C. Again, this was developed by Ruth Ruprecht. We had to establish then also a suppression in the animals using this virus. And this is shown here. Uh, what I wanted to point out is, now, we did do a longer, as you can see, infection period, six months. We were advised at that time to do six months. We also treated for six months uh, with antiretroviral therapy and then did different therapeutic intervention, for example, transplantation or simply uh, take the AMS off art. What I want to point out, and this is really the, the, the foundation of our uh, new uh, defeat HIV, UM1 now, is really all these animals rebounded. 
when we took them off art. So clearly they did not control uh, their, their shiv. Uh, so this was critical for us to know that all these animals uh, did rebound after we took them off the art uh, uh, um, treatment. What we saw in these animals as well was very nice. Uh, after we uh, infected the animals, you see here gut-associated CD4 cells uh, were depleted uh, here in the uh, upper panel and lower panel. And upon uh, starting uh, CR treatment, we saw recovery of the CD4 T cells again in the uh, gut and the lymph, node, uh, lymph nodes. And this is shown down here in the, from the colon and the duodenum. Then we moved on to the CCR5 studies as part of our defeat HIV uh, studies and, and, and optimized, again, editing of CD34 cells. And here, just to show, we focused on the zinc finger technology uh, with Sangamo, but we've also, uh, especially with the Rawlings lab, as you know, uh, we'll hear some of the, those studies have focused on megatol uh, nucleases and CRISPR nucleases to edit and, and disrupt CCR5. What we've learned there is we are, we've optimized these conditions very nicely, and again, Chris has been doing most of that work. So in vitro, we were able to be quite efficient, about 46% CCR5 disruption. What we've learned then also, and you can see how important these non-human primate studies are, when we infuse these cells into non-human primates, we actually saw a significant drop after that initial engraftment, as you can see over here and over time. Um, so we're still studying right now how to prevent this drop in, in CCR5 modified cells in animals. But what I wanted to point out here, and the important thing is that we see maintenance of CCR5 disrupted cells in animals. We also see multi-lineage disruption up there, not only in T cells, but also in CD20 cells and CD4 myeloid cells. Uh, that was important. And another critical aspect we've learned from these studies, again, is that we were able to select, when we infected these animals, we did see selection of protected cells uh, in these animals, even though at low levels, uh, again, in the lymphoid compartment. So based on this, again, we moved on to our second iter uh, generation of defeat HIV, and it, we learned that the, the importance of HIV protection to, in, in, of stem cells and T cells to develop uh, HIV-specific immune responses in these animals. And again, we took that knowledge then uh, to apply to our second generation uh, for cell and gene therapy uh, to, to now devise uh, novel CAR T-cell studies and therapeutic vaccine approaches with protected T-cells. And here I'd just like to again point out what we do for CAR T-cell studies now. Typically, this is done in patients. As you know, we do leukapheresis isolate specific subpopulations of T cells. We can genetically modify them. Uh, then we can expand them, and that's what we do in patients. In fact, then uh, transfusion back into patients. And again, what I'd like to show here is we do exactly the same in non-human primates. We can use almost the same markers, and really this is highly translatable to humans then. And this has already been shown uh, uh, at the Fred Hutch by the Stan Riedel and Carolina Berger group, where they've shown very nicely to, to model uh, the safety of targeting ROR1 in primates using a chimeric antigen receptor um, modified T cell population. And this study is now in clinical trials. So these studies really, uh, I think, uh, um, can pave the way to the clinic very nicely. Now, in our IRF1, as you've heard, uh, Thor Wagner, David Rawlings, and Larry Corey, um, and others, uh, will focus on using a single-chain variable fragment uh, derived from broadly neutralizing antibodies, or they will use different single-chain variable uh, fragments to then target HIV-infected cell cells with surface expression of HIV envelopes. And again, the critical aspect here, where we, again, use our knowledge from our first uh, generation, uh, defeat HIV, we will protect the uh, CCR5 uh, via CCR5 disruption, the CAR-modified T cells uh, to prevent HIV infection of these CAR-expressing cells. Now, we already have um, substantial pre, uh, preliminary data. We know we can very nicely, again, expand these T cells in vitro. We know we can disrupt the T cells in monkeys very nicely, either using megatels or zinc finger technology. And we know these CAR T cells are functional in in vitro assays by uh, uh, using these CAR T cells and, uh, against uh, cell lines infected with HIV. Now, for the conserved element, the novel, uh, the novel uh, vaccine uh, approach that you'll hear also about uh, from 
Deb Fuller and the future certainly more by Jim Mullins as well, are, are targeting conserved elements. What we will do here is again, we will use our model with the shift infection over here, uh, then art treatment, and then conserved elements vaccination. And then what you see here, then we collect the T cells and then Deb will bring them back to the laboratory, deplete T regulatory cells and add you know, conserved element peptides to further expand these specific cells. But also, and again, this is the critical part, we will also gene edit them to make them resistant to um, HIV or SHIV infection then. So with that, I'd like to conclude as well. I think we've got a very nice, we've validated, I think, our SHIV NHP model to study clinically relevant bioreservoirs and cure strategies using these cell and uh, gene therapy approaches. Uh, I think we've demonstrated uh, the, the efficient gene editing in macaque and, and human T cells, and then the importance of HIV and SHIV uh, protected T cells uh, for both CAR T cell studies um, and vaccine studies. And again, with that, this is our collaboratory. I just want to put some faces uh, to that with Jim Mullins up here and Deb Fuller on the panel, uh, Michael Farzan, Chris, uh, who's really doing a, a lot of the animal work, uh, Thor Wagner, David Rawlings, uh, obviously Larry here, uh, and then the uh, collaboratory infrastructure. Thank you.